Okay, collectors, uh, here we are again. Uh, we're on the unboxing video number 48, I believe. Is that right, Ob? No, nah, you're wrong again, Pops. Number 49. 49. Okay, well, it's a good thing I have you here. Keep me straight. <laughs> um, today is, um, I think, the 11th of October, 2022. So, uh, am I right about that, Ob? Yes. Good, okay. <laughs> we're, we're just getting... We're just getting recovered here. Uh, um, we had a, we had a call from a, an antique guy that lives over in Philadelphia, and uh, he said he got a collection of uh, helmets and bayonets and daggers, and um, could he uh, bring them over so that we could have a look at them? And of course, when you hear something like that, you say, "Absolutely, uh, can't wait." So um, he got over here, he left a short time ago, and uh, Robbie helped him carry all the stuff in, and uh, we were uh, all set for uh, some great things to see. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Up? <laughs> and, uh, it's like staring so, into a toilet bowl. Oh, <laughs> so we, that's we, what I'm laughing at. We, we opened the, the first box and it had about five helmets in there. Uh, every one of them but one had been repainted uh, by the guy with a, a fake um, decal on it or a hand-painted Africa core and uh, the liners were either out of them or not right. And uh, I think the only good helmet he had was an Italian helmet, right, Ob? Uh, no, the, uh, I'm not even sure that one was good. I looked at it again and the thing is uh, worthy of the collection. Aha, uh -huh. it was in the same state. Huh? Yes. All right, so so we got through those whole helmets and uh, kind of embarrassed about the whole thing. Uh, uh, <laughs> but we thought, well, let's look in the next box and uh, open the next box. And there's some daggers in there. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, this is really going to be good. And uh, I get out of uh, the first uh, dagger is an SA. I could see that the scabbard ring was missing from it, and it was an early dagger, and it was in a late scabbard. And uh, I took the dagger out, and the uh, the dagger was so worn you couldn't even see the motto yet on it. I mean, it just, and you couldn't see the maker; even that was worn off of it. And uh, it just kept reaching in, and everything just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, there was a couple of second model Luftwaffe's, um, both were um, uh, absolute fakes. Uh, there was some kind of an army dagger that had a, uh, a blue handle on there that somebody wrapped in the leather. I guess we got a lot of people calling here and we got nobody to help us. Debbie's out with the COVID, you guys probably know that, but uh, anyhow. So then uh, there, there was, uh, the daggers were virtually worthless. Uh, oh, there was also a, uh, a fake SS High Leader in there, yeah. too. You know, the ones with the fancy engraved cross guards. And, uh, uh, and then the last box was um, bayonets. And uh, uh, the only decent bayonets in there were uh, two K-98s, and the numbers didn't match on them either. So you talk about frustration. Uh, there, was, um, there was virtually nothing to give an appraisal one. Uh, I told the guy if he wants to give the estate maybe 500 bucks, uh, maybe there's that much in parts in some of the daggers. But uh, I did like the scabbard though, only because it had 9,000 on the. Uh, that that was the number. It was mis mismatched, of course. Oh, uh, oh, the. But uh, it was 9,000. Yeah, the, the K98 scabbard. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. But um, besides that, you know, it was flush it. <laughs> But that's the way. That's the way it is in this business. And um, you know, when somebody wants to bring some things in for us to have a look or give them a quick appraisal, we're always happy to do that and kind of hope for the best. And uh, but after this one was done, I'll tell you, it was really, uh, it was really kind of, kind of a. Uh, <laughs> uh, a nothing. And then the guy wanted to pay me. For the appraisal, and uh, I, I just, uh, I just didn't have the. Um, you need a light, Ob. Is that I what do. the problem yes. is here? Yep. Here's a light. Thank you, Tom. We'll waste everybody's time here. All these years, and you don't know which way to 
flip the Dunhill, but uh, that's the way it is, I guess. And uh, so I, I just, uh, I just didn't even have the uh, the heart to charge him anything, and uh, I wished him. Uh, good luck, and he said, well, maybe I'll get some better stuff, and you never know with antique dealers, they, they can, but, so here's to him, I hope he does better in the future. His name is Mark, very nice man, and uh, he just took a shot, and it didn't he work out. He took a shot, and it didn't work out, and, uh, and we wasted about, I guess, an hour with all that, but, um, but that's part of the business. Okay, I don't want to bore you with all that, so we'll get started on our uh, on our unboxing. And let's see, we'll start with the the first uh, the first box here. This comes from a guy in New York City, and so he got a TV there. Yeah, it does look like a TV. I never know what this guy is going to going to send me. He he gets some. Uh, Sometimes he gets some great things, and uh, sometimes he gets some things like we were just talking about too. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's hope that uh, that this box has some great things in it. We shall see. Uh, it's got to be better than this afternoon. Oh, I'll tell you that much. I got to have a drink. <laughs> oh, I have to give him though. That'll get me over that. But you know, in all the years I've been doing that. Uh, I don't think I've seen such a just a hundred percent nothing yeah. uh, with all those pieces. It just uh, well, wow. you usually you usually give them gas money. For I almost out. Uh, <laughs> well, that's maybe why I didn't charge him. I thought maybe that uh, he he could at least save the money he was going to give me and buy a tank of gas to get home. But uh, boy, that was a that was a sad it was, uh, sad yeah. situation. We need to. Uh, we need to recoup after that. It was a mess. Let's see. I don't know what heck we got here. We got shopping bags here. Let's see. This is, uh, wow. It looks like a pretty nice. Uh, oops! It was nice. <laughs> Imperial goblet. Um, Looks like it's uh, it's all silver hallmarked and all, and uh, it's got a um, uh, an imperial um, coat of arms on it, and uh, I don't know what the uh, the uh, arrow is on the top of it there, but uh, well, can you um, can you tilt the uh, arms to me so I can see, show the viewers? Uh, pick it up and tilt it towards me. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, right, yeah. And what do you think that arm says? Well, it's um, it's a typical Holland's Air and Eagle, so it's just Prussian and. Uh, oh, there's one uh, on the back too. It's I think that's a Munich. Oh, there it goes again. Boy, this thing is uh, good thing a table we, we saw. We were going to ask a thousand. Now it's two hundred. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gee, I'm sorry, collector. Sometimes it goes this way, but uh, it looks like a Munich. We're not symbol even on the drunk back. yet, and uh, let's see. It says uh, fourteen Deutsches Bundes. Uh, Scheisen, okay. Scheisen? Yeah, you should say Scheisen. <laughs> uh, you know what Scheisen means. It wouldn't, you wouldn't get awarded for that. Uh, Maybe. And it's from Hanover. It's dated um, 1903. And um, it actually is a very good piece. If you can see the bottom, it's hallmarked with um, silver hallmarkings. I guess it was a good piece before I dropped the yeah, lid twice. But, we uh, got a load of it, yeah. Can you get that, Ub? Yes. Okay, you got it? You sure of that? It looks like, um, what's the back look like? There's a there's a shield on the back of it. On the back of the vase. There's a, a uh, what's on the, oh, uh, you mean on the rim or something? No, right there. See, there's two different shields. Yeah, this no. uh, this looks like a. Um, it looks like a, Munich it's to me. Probably the, it looks like Munich, but it's probably the shield of Hanover. We'll have to look it up and see. Just give uh, me a second. Give me a second. Put but it, anyhow, put it back, Pop. I need to see that. Well, okay. We had a shooting trophy here, and uh, let's see what's uh, what's in this box next. 
try to handle a little more gently, whatever it is. If I can figure out how to open it, here we go. Ah! Wow, this looks good. Oh, we can always use these. Uh, got a couple of uh, HJ knives here uh, with good leather. The paint's kind of worn on this one, but the hilt looks okay. A little bit of wear there from the leather, but yeah. And the, the blade, it's an RZM uh, 719 1939. And the blade doesn't look too bad at all. It's not all sharpened up and uh, uh, we'll look and see what it is on the other side. It's just plain and more wear on the pommel too, but uh, not a not really a bad piece. Huh. Yeah, because youth knives are Late very much in demand. Yeah. Uh, well, I see a problem here right off the bat with this one. Um, yeah, the um, what we got here, collectors. Um, somebody redid this this blade, uh, and it looks like um, they marked their initials maybe on the Ricasso there. Uh, the plating is um, is pretty nice. It's not bad. And uh, let's see what we have on the re reverse Ricasso here. It's um, M65 1939. Uh, but remember, collectors, I told you there's a problem that I saw right off the bat. Uh, and if you look closely as this, at this scabbard, you guys that collect HJ things, you'll know right away what I'm talking about. See that little lip there, collectors? That's a post-war scabbard. So probably the guy that originally found this knife, the scabbard was lousy, and he thought, oh, I'll get another scabbard for it, no problem. Uh, the big problem is he bought a post-war scabbard. So that, uh, that's not too good of a thing. You all see that on originals, there's no lip on the scabbard on HJ knives. Remember that, it's very important. Um, let's see if there's anything else in this box. Something fairly heavy in here. Got a fish? Yeah, fish. Oh, well, <laughs> all right, guys. Here we got a um, an American uh, World War One uh, kind of a trench knife with the uh, uh, the brass knuckles on it. And normally these have like a leather scabbard with metal ends, but apparently the uh, the scabbard is uh, is gone from it. Let's see if there's any markings on this piece. Uh, I don't see really see anything. Just a uh, something uh, stamped into the handle, but it's uh, just a number or something. So uh, uh, that's interesting for guys that collect this kind of stuff. It's a real heavy duty job there. Definitely World War One, though, when you say. Yeah. Oh yeah, World War One. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. You know. All right. So that's that's this box. Nothing earth shaking. And um, sorry about that repro scabbard, but I don't I don't control what uh, what comes in here. And uh, all right, I'll drink to you. Hope you find <laughs> another scabbard that's proper, because I'll be sending that one back. No, that's good advice to the collectors, Dad. There's nothing wrong with that. No, it's good to see that stuff once in a while, and you know, uh, nobody knows everything, and it's uh, it's always good to. You do. <laughs> well, I, I don't know everything either. I know a lot, but not everything. But let's see what we got in this next box. I guess it's some kind of sword. The way it's uh, in a long box, we shall see. Boy, these unboxings are crazy, aren't they, collectors? You never know. Actually, this whole business is crazy. You never know. Boy, after all that rubble that that antique dealer brought in, I'm having a hard time getting over it here. It's uh, okay, you, uh, got that you right. see something like that, you th you figure, well, there's got to at least be one or two good things in the, with all these pieces. And I mean, there was not one real, well, nothing really was around. Nothing. Man, it was. Uh, 
the best pieces he had was a mis mismatched K98, and you know, that was the best piece. That was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does look like we have a sword here, guys. Uh, let's see what this is all about. Um, uh, looks like we got some goodies here also uh, with the sword. Oh, there's that Bob Burns razor knife. Got to have that. SS birthday? Yeah, SS birthday. Oh yeah, we got some good things here. These are stuff go. that guys are always looking for. I, I get more emails <coughs> from people looking for um, uh, second class iron crosses. And, and I can see why. I mean, they were sort of the standard of Germany and uh, second class crosses always look good uh, displayed with something else. And, and let's see what we got here. Uh, Wow, that looks like a real nice one. Real nice with the um, uh, the ribbon. Oh, here's another one that's that one uh, shows a little more patina, but still nice. And here's a third one that sh that also shows some patina, a little a uh, little damage to the ribbon, but it is what it is. So there's um, there's three really. Yeah. Decent iron crosses, yep. all real, and uh, uh, definitely for you guys that are looking for them, we have some now, so that's always good. Looks looks like you have a couple of uh, ACA armbands in there too. Well, let's see what we got here. Uh, we got to be careful with these. I, yeah, really I, fast. I can't show you too much. Uh, uh, this is an HJ here on the top. It's a very nice, uh, very got nice a, uh, armband. It's got a tag in there. Yeah, it's even got a tag. Yeah. It's a very nice piece. Uh, the next Sports. one is a uh, SA Sports in good condition. Oh, that's got the tag in it also. Very nice. Uh, here's a um, an Army Helper. Mm -hmm. I like them when they're stamped like that, don't you, Ob? Sure. Yeah, it shows they were kind of issued and so forth. So that's kind of good. I got another HJ here. Uh, this one shows a little more wear. It's got a little sewing up here that looks period where the guy had to uh, do a little repair. And uh, there's also the remains of the uh, issue tag in there. Mm -hmm. And then we got a, uh, a Deutsche Wehrmacht. Uh, this, these were people that were assisting the, uh, the army. And uh, here's a nice uh, cotton armband piece it's a good one it's all separate construction and uh, good SA armband and STAP yeah yep. yeah yeah nothing inside and usually that's good. they're not in there for some reason what's uh, that usually you don't see ties inside the MSDAP no not on the, these uh, yeah. these kind you usually don't so prevalent yeah you know. uh, and this one's a real winner it's a it's a wool armband all separate construction and I don't think there's uh, any. No, there's no mothing in this either. I was going to say, if there's a tag, it could be a great coat, but. No, no, it's a, it's just a, a, a regular um, SA one, but that's a nice one. So Good we're stuff. glad to have yeah. those. Absolutely. They look, they look pretty nice to me. You like them, Bob? Yeah, I like them. Yeah. And they're all real, and the iron crosses are real. And let's see what else my favorite we here. Looks like we got a nice uh, army officer sword. It's in. Uh, it's a real heavy brass one uh, with a with a choice eagle. This is going to be a maker we don't usually see all the time. Maybe class or somebody. I don't know. But Sealheimer. It, well, it, uh, I think I think it might be class, but I don't know. Let's see. Uh, well, it's not marked. Up, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it is marked. Um, I was kind of hoping to see that uh, martini glass. No, I don't know. I can't see the mark, but uh, but that's a pretty nice sword. The scabbard paint is really nice, and uh, I love the hilt. That eagle is a beauty, with a real good uh, blade. No problem what do you mean at you can't all. Can't see the maker. Huh? Who's the maker? Come on. It's uh, it's under there. It might be WKC. 
it's under the uh, langette, so you, okay. you can't see it. I'll have to, to be look. determined. Yeah, to be determined. Yeah, but uh, that's a uh, that's a pretty nice uh, sword there. Nothing nothing wrong with that at all. That's a nice box, though. Good box. Yeah, good box. That's from a guy that sends me a lot of things down in Florida. He probably sent that out during the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's still around. Ah. Yeah. yeah, you never know with that stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay, moving along, guys. Time for a little hit here. Prost. Mm. Ah, yes. And hope my cigar still lit. No? All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see what's coming up next. Uh, uh, we'll see what this is. It's a small box. So how you guys doing? I hope you're all right now enjoying this uh, fall weather and uh, last episode I talked about the uh, the E and hurricane. I hope you Florida guys are getting cleaned up and uh, hope nobody had any trouble with that but uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Well, it looks like it's going to be armband day. Here's another one. Um, a nice uh, political example in good condition. Uh, uh, from what I've seen, armbands are very, very in demand at this point. Uh, we collectors, we cannot keep them in stock, as Robbie says. I mean, it's just... Um, Half the time we don't even get a chance to put them up on the site because you guys see them in these unboxings. Uh, and then when we do get them up on the site they all go in uh, oh, a day or two. And uh, uh, It's funny, you, when, you, when I used to walk around shows, I mean all you saw was uh, armbands, second, cross, iron, second class iron crosses, and uh, um, those things are just sort of, um, uh, oh, it's amazing, all of them that there were, they're just very hard to find anymore. And, oh, this is nice, yeah. Uh, this is a, uh, an edition of Mein Kampf with the original uh, paper cover. It's in good condition. Let's see if we can uh, tell the year here on it. Uh, there's, there's our friend Adolf there with his smiling face. Don't see many smiles on that man. You ever notice that, guys? Very few smiles. Okay, it's a 1936 edition. So that's a nice thing to have. There are a lot of collectors that can. Can you look through it a little more, see if there's a dedication or a signature? Yeah, or? yeah. I can look through it. Or is it just a mine comp? No, just I think, a mine I think comp. it's just, just a mine comp. That's okay. it. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of collectors uh, seem to be into these, and uh, yeah. they... Um, they collect them by year, by yep. type, and uh, wartime my comp uh, always uh, desirable. Yeah, remember uh, I a guess. couple of unboxings ago we had a a mine comp that was all in um, Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, uh, Whatever happened to that? I don't remember. Well, I uh, I haven't put it up yet on the site. Uh, I finally figured out you have to read it from the back to the front <laughs> instead of from the front to the back and. Uh, when I showed it, I uh, yeah. opened the wrong, I opened the right side of it, which was the wrong side. Good and luck you, with that, buddy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> that's, exactly. That's, that's, that's and you have to be able to read Japanese too, though. And, and, and that's right. That's right. Uh, so, and the trouble with it too, it's a consignment piece, and uh, uh, the guy wanted a, a pretty good number for it, uh, and oh, I assume it's very valuable. It's absolutely a rare book. If you're a Mein Kampf collector, you've, you've got to have, have, have that. Yeah, you got to have it. Yeah. And, you know. I think the guy wanted $5,000 for it. That's, that's well, a lot. That's a reasonable price, I believe. But who knows? Uh, well, let's see what's next, guys. Oh, I like the way it's boxed. Look how neatly that guy did this. Isn't that nice? And, uh, it looks like it might be a helmet, but we'll see. Yeah, this is a good uh, good job here. 
How about a nice double decal SS? Yes. Yeah. Well, here's to the good job. Mm. Yeah, I hope it's a, a nice, uh, it is a, uh-oh. Ah, here we go. We had one of these a couple of unboxings ago. As you will remember, collectors. Uh, this is a, um, obviously a Red Cross helmet. Hmm. And it's done in the uh, field green color. Somebody wrote number five, I guess that was at a nine. That may have been the district they were assigned to with it. Um, and it's got the same thing on the other side. And it's got, it's a lighter weight, but it's steel. And, um, oh wow, it goes further here. Look at all this. Wow, here's, yeah, there's that number five there. And there's the man's name, I guess. Wow, that's a nice piece, Pop. Yeah. And look at this. Here's the... Yeah, uh, look at... Yeah, that's yeah. just... Uh, this is really a, a beautiful piece. It still has the chin strap. The chin strap is in great condition. And then there's a something there. Uh, Octung in the middle. I don't know what that's oh. all about, but... Uh, I'm going to bitch it about something. Octung nicht. We're passing... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. The chin straps are covering it, but boy, that's a good helmet. Yeah, I, I like this helmet a lot. Uh, it's um, it's <laughs> it's a hundred percent too. I'll tell you, boy, that's a. Uh, well, I don't blame you for yeah, wrapping it, it yeah. up so nice. That, that's that that's a, a real killer there. In my yeah, that opinion. is a killer. Um, uh, and we don't we don't see many Red Cross helmets. That's not a common thing at all. Okay, collectors, uh, we took a little break and got a refill here, and uh, looks like Ob got one himself, huh, Ob? Yeah. Can you still see through the lens? Uh, my disgusting ashtray and my cocktail, yes, I do. I just uh, put my glasses on, so yes, I can still see. Okay, that's good. All right, here we go with the next box. Ah, oh, boy, this Bob Burns cutter is really working good. Yes, sir. I try to use a new one every time, but uh, when I run out of them, I'll have to hit Bob up for another box of them. You know, Pop, when we were at the Mac show, 65% of the people I met call me Ob now, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that, Ob. <laughs> That's okay, okay. I like uh, it. Let's see what we got here. It looks like a, an army dagger that uh, is easy to open. I like that. Well, and as usual, it's in the scabbard backwards. I don't know why everybody does that. But, I think uh, they're messing with us at this point. Uh, but look at the silvering on it. It's really yeah. beautiful. It's in perfect condition, completely dent-free, uh, great uh, patina. And oops, what do we got here? Oh, my goodness. Uh, let me just look at this first, and then you can photograph it, Ob. Uh, Try my best. Uh, the officer corps for our Commandor, uh, 1940. Hmm. From four, yeah, it gives a date. Uh, yeah, boy, that's a that's a nice. Uh, yeah, let me take a look at that. That's a nice uh, dedication there. Um, uh, the officers must have chipped in and uh, gave this to the boss. Wow, that's uh, that's incredible. And beautiful orange beautiful grip. Beautiful workmanship. And, oh yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a dandy. Who do you think uh, the maker is, Pop? Well, you can't tell. These are generic, generic B, yeah. um, generic B fittings, uh, but they're really, really nice. All right, uh, I'm going to go with Icorn. No, 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 it wouldn't no? be. No, impossible, no. Alcozo. It, no, wouldn't be Alcozo <laughs> either. It, it's some smaller maker, Anton Wingen or something like that. All right, or, let's you know. take a look. Uh, well, we may as well, yeah. Wow, what a nice blade, too, wouldn't you? See, the blade is plated. It's nickel-plated yeah. also, because yeah. this was a high-class piece here. These sure. guys bought this for the boss, and they probably paid a little extra money for probably a little heavier silvering and a, and a nickel-plated blade. Since the blade's nickel-plated, I'm going to say it might be class, because they did that a lot. Or Krebs. Well, yeah. we'll see. Here we go. You ready? Whoa, <laughs> it 
can't believe it, it's a hauler. hauler yeah. So hauler, I guess, got paid some extra money for that, and uh, they did the job because hauler did not normally make plated no. blades, not on army daggers. Are you right about that? You got me again. Well, I got myself too because I had no idea it'd be hauler. See, because of the later date on it, Holler wasn't using their regular fittings either, or if I, I would have known it's a Holler, they just bought the generic fittings. But that's um That's a nice piece. That's a super, super yeah. dagger. Wow. I wouldn't mind having that one myself, but yeah, I can't, <laughs> can't keep everything. Can't keep everything. Can only try. Yeah. But uh, that's a that's a very nice uh, that's a nice piece. Nice piece, I'm happy to have that. And, uh, so that's good. Somebody else will be happy to have it too. Nothing wrong with that dagger at at all. Not at all. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. That's an empty box. It's not I'm gonna, I got this big box here. Um, I'll try to lift it up onto the top here. Okay, collectors, I uh, had to have Ob lift this box up. It's so heavy. It either has a big bronze in it or uh, uh, 50 bayonets or I don't know. We'll see, but it's um, it's got something in it that's really heavy or a lot of things that add up to a lot of weight, but uh, we'll see what we got here. Uh, there's another phone ringing there. We took the phone off the hook, but we forgot to take the private number off the hook. So uh, it's hard when uh, when Debbie's not here, but uh, she's getting better, and uh, uh, hopefully she'll be back in the office in a in a few days because we really miss her here. Uh, you guys probably won't believe it, but uh, none of us here has uh, any idea how to send a. Uh, UPS box or uh, uh, work the stamp machine or charge a credit card and uh, without Debbie we're uh, we're kind of kind of still in the water here but uh, hopefully she'll be back soon guys are going to be screaming where's my stuff I paid and uh, I'll say well you paid but we never charged your account yet and we didn't put your check in yet either, so uh, don't get too mad at us. We'll get it out to you. Well, here we go with this stuff. Let's see what we got here. There's, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things in here, so we're gonna we're gonna have to go through this. We got a bazook there. Kind of quickly. Okay, I got Ob to put that heavy box down here, and we'll work from the box. But as you can see, we got the first dagger out, and uh, it's a. Um, it's what we call the social welfare and it has social welfare hangers and um, it's got a porta pee that absolutely looks original to it I'll tell you why if you just look look in between there see how much more yellow the grip yeah. is so the porta pee is protecting it and that porta pee's always been on there like that I love stuff like that and another thing People say, well, what's the difference between a Red Cross and a social welfare dagger? And uh, you're looking at uh, the holes here where the hangers go are round. Uh, we call round holes social welfare daggers. Uh, we don't really know whether that's the case or not, or whether it was just one manufacturer that made the holes round. But it doesn't really matter because they're accepted within the collecting community as social welfare and they're a little bit rarer than Red Cross ones. So normally if you're going to have a Red Cross, you probably want to have a social welfare dagger too. So Pop, do you, do you think it's regional or was it no, the maker? No, it's or? the maker. It's it's only the maker. Uh, they is there anybody didn't want to, they like didn't want to put that? Red, uh, I mean, let's get it out there of the way. There is no way to confirm it because Red Cross officers are uh, generally not marked on the blade. Um, yeah. The regular ones, as you guys probably know, have rectangular holes here uh, for the eyelets, not round holes. But anyhow, this this is a pretty nice dagger. Looking at it, it's uh, wow! It's got a good blade, a little bit of smudge here, but the blade is nice and bright. 
And um, what, what they did too on Red Cross and social welfare, you see me rubbing this here, and the reason why is on the, it's interesting on the Ricasso, on these daggers, the Ricasso is always nickel plated, whereas the blade itself uh, is um, uh, just um, polished. You can see the graining in the blade, but you'll see no grain in the Ricasso because it, um, it's plated. So, uh, so that's a look at the knot on the back too. It's kind of interesting the way it's done. So that's a that's kind of a it's kind a nice of a neat, piece. Neat, no, yeah, yeah. It's, it is a nice piece. There's nothing nothing wrong Red with that. Red Cross is da da da, but you know. No, that's a nice piece, and it's nice to see it. I'm the, sorry, social welfare. Social welfare, and it, and it the hangers look like they've always been on yeah. it. I mean, you can't tell for sure, but uh, but I like that. It'd be nice to know the answer to that though. I, it's one of those questions whether anybody will ever figure it out. I know uh, if you take the grips off of a Red Cross officer, sometimes you'll see some markings, uh, initials that can identify the maker. And uh, one of these days we'll have to do that and see, uh, see what's going on. Okay, here we have a, uh, a DLV glider pilot. Nice uncleaned version right. Real nice. with a good hanger and the leather is really nice. It's interesting on this hanger the leather is toned blue. Usually it's just a brown color. I'll bet the original owner did that. That's <laughs> what it looks like to me. That looks cool. I like that. You notice that? Yeah, yeah, they're usually right. they're brown and that one is blue. And uh, the same on the other side, and the, the leather, I mean, the dagger shows a little wear, but... Um, it's funny, it, rem it reminds me of one of those Luftwaffe hangers that you see for the swords. Yeah, you that's know? it, that's yeah. it, yeah, exactly. The same, same color. Type of, yeah, yeah, same color, yeah. And it has a decent blade on it. SMF? Um, nope, this one's Damn. a Paul Weyersberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going yeah. for like seven now, so. <laughs> uh, and it's got the K on the cross guard, and yeah. uh, we got, yeah, there's that DLV marking on the throat. That's a nice piece. I like the So uh, it's a good patina. piece. It's, it's, yeah. it's worn a little bit, but uh, it's still in nice condition, so yeah, it's not, a nice a, piece. not a thing wrong with that one. I like the uh, hanger too, Pop. Yeah, I, I kind of like that too. It's different. A lot of daggers in here, guys, so you're going to have to bear with us. It's uh, going to take some time. Let's see what we got here. I like the rubber bands. That helps a lot. Alright, here we got a, an army that's complete. Yep. Looks like a nice dagger. Uh, the hangers are... Uh, Hangers are on backwards. There you go. So uh, <laughs> I swear they're messing with us. <laughs> Why do they do that? I don't I think understand. they're messing with us. They know what's going they, on they, at this point. It's crazy, but, but at least the they hangers, haven't got another chicken yet. So no, no chickens <laughs> yet. But you can see the hangers are nice on it. Nice army hangers, and uh, it looks like we're going to have a WKC here, Rob. You see that? Uh, that uh, hatchet beak that's eagle my there. One. Yes. Yep. Yep. And what else I'm seeing, there's just one screw here, that's a WKC trait. Not another screw on the other side, a nice orange grip. Well, let's see how good you are. Oh, I well, know I'm right on this one, I gotta be. Nice. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a WKC dagger. But uh, it's, it's, a got, it's a small yeah. maker. Yeah. It's a small maker that bought the parts bought from the parts, WKC. Yeah. It's a Spitzer with a beautiful Blue blade. Spitzer, yeah. And could Spitzer you, uh, things are nice, yeah. Could you turn the blade towards me, Pop, please? No, the uh, uh I just, just, just uh, yeah, I'll do it, yeah. Okay. Oops, sorry. So you see what that is, collectors? Um, a, a company like Spitzer was relatively small, and they bought these parts directly from WKC, and uh, probably put it together in their factory, but um, uh, didn't really make any changes uh, to the piece at all. And it's got a nice grip and uh, good hangers and uh, even a real nice port -a -pee too. That's a wonderful trademark too. That's a good dagger right there. Oh yeah, it's a very good yeah. dagger. I like it. 
Just turn the hangers around, you got a nice piece. Yeah, it's a good piece. Let's see what else we got here, moving right along. That's a nice box you got going there, Pop. Yeah, so far not too bad. Let's see what else is in here. I'm going to buy all this stuff too, so I better, mm. better uh, <laughs> boost up my bank account here. Better slow down on the booze. Or turn it up. Or turn it up, yeah. <laughs> and let's see what we got here. Well, here we got some trouble that's not... You recognize the problem here, Rob, other than the backward hangers? Uh, they look like army hangers to me, Pop. They mm. do, do they? How about yeah. the scabbard? It looks like an army scabbard to me, Pop. And what's the rest of it here? Luftwaffe. Well, see, these things happen sometimes. Uh, maybe we'll find an army dagger that's in a Luftwaffe scabbard and somehow it got switched around in this box. Did, didn't we just know? see that earlier today with yeah, the guy? Yeah, it, it, it certainly <laughs> happens. And, uh, oh, it's a nice dagger, though. It's got the owner's uh, yeah. monogram on it there. R-H, right. it looks like. Robert Hollingsworth. <laughs> hey, there yeah, you go, yeah. Bob. He just had a W. This was made for you in your former life. Yeah. Let's see what the blade looks like. This is, I mean, you know, you see something like this and we it's know a, it's wrong. It's a GI put not, together, but that's not, okay. It's, it's, hard, it's not hard to straighten out. And a nice blade on it. Now, you, do you know the maker on this one, Pop? No, not on Luftwaffe. It's I'm going to take really a shot. Hard. Let's take a shot. Let's, uh, uh, this is uh, really... Uh, I'm going to say it's SMF. i got to get an SMF. Uh, I don't know. It's not SMF, I don't think. No, it's Horster. Uh, okay. Damn. Over eight. Horster, yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible. Yeah. Well, Luftwaffe's are hard to tell unless you really yeah, study yeah. the uh, the mounts. So all that's generic mounts. It's in the wrong scabbard, but uh, hey. Hey, it's still a uh, little. I think we might be able to straighten it out. Perhaps. I've seen worse. Let's put it that way. Oh yeah. Let's see what's next here. Oh. I kind of like this stuff though. It's uh, it's all pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Ah, here we it's go. It's real, and that's all that counts. Yeah, oh, everything so far is real. A lot well, different careful. than that. Uh, be careful on that hanger. Yeah, the oh, hanger is very fragile. Uh, it's an RLB enlisted man first model with nickel fittings all throughout. The grip's still good. It shows a little wear, but it's not bad. Okay, I have a question for you. There's a little ding here, but not bad. Can you tell me the difference between the RLB and the RAD? Well, the RAD is a total different dagger. What do you mean? Not dagger-wise. Uh, what the organization? The organization, is? yeah. Well, the because the, they're both uh, labor unions, from uh, what I understand. The, R the RAD was in charge of maintaining the forests and little bridges and helping out in little villages and they were really kind of a labor group and uh, it was something that a lot of um, Hitler Youth people went into after they came out of the Hitler Youth and of course a lot of uh, army, army people were also former RAD members uh, whereas the RLB was um, the um, Luft Protection Society where if there was going to be a bombing, they were in charge of getting all the people into the shelters and organizing that. And there were also RLB people that were assigned to um, factory type uh, guarding things and so forth too. Uh, but this, when you see this, this is a typical enlisted man. It's a first model. And uh, well, the blade is a little bit dull, um, little uh, but this one is, uh, this is a Spitzer also. You shop Spitzer, and, yeah. And the Spitzer made nice RLB things. Usually the blades are in better condition than this one. And there's a couple of little dings in the scabbard too. But still, it's a real dagger. It's a good quality, all nickel pieces. And uh, I like that uh, maker. It looks like a can of low and brow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might be right about that, Rob. Let's see. Uh, more so, huh? Oh, there's a lot, lot more here. Yeah, there's a lot, lot to look at here for this stuff. Oh, here we go. Here's a, uh, here's a decent um, NSKK. NSKK. Yeah. 
Uh, the hanger is just clipped to the ring, but at least it's there. Uh, very nice paint, plated fittings. This one has a nickel eagle in it. So uh, this looks like a decent, uh, decent dagger. Very nice grip. Yeah, nothing wrong with that piece. And let's see who. Wow, very nice mint blade, alles for Deutschland. And let's see on the back up. RZM M737, which late, I'll, late offhand late I don't know who yeah. that is, but uh, no gal mark because the RZM, right? No, it's a later dagger. It's uh, after it's, the group of marks. M732, I believe, or 39? 37 it 37. is, I think, yeah. So that's a that's a swell piece. Nothing wrong with that at all. I like that one. I'm surprised SAs are so hot, but NSKKs are not, you know? Uh, well, it depends on, because uh, mostly NSKKs you see later on. You do see the early ones that were SAs that were made into and SKK's painting the scabbard. Yeah. Uh, but even still, you're right, they're not as popular as Yeah, uh, for as some SAs. reason. But Maybe they... it's because collectors don't understand them. <laughs> but uh, but that's a that's a good NSKK piece there. They will be because there won't be anything left to buy. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see what's coming up next here. A lot of daggers in this shipment. Well oh, you got that right. See what we got here. Oh. No scabbard. Well, what do you got there? Tuna hoagie? Here we have is a, uh, of course, a Red Cross hewer. It's in nice condition. Uh, the blade looks like it's still in mint condition. Uh, the fittings are really nice with no flaking to the nickel. And uh, the grips are good. Uh, yep, the grip is grips are both good. So, um, so that's not a problem. We have a we have a few um, Red Cross scabbards around that we probably could mate up to that. We'll see. So, I'll still buy it because it's a nice nice piece. Now, this here we have a, uh, a hunting cutlass. Uh, this one is um, uh, very nice with the uh, D, the D guard and beautiful grip and so forth and uh, good um, nickel mounts or uh, brass mounts and uh, uh, it's a little unusual with the blade with the with the wide fuller like that but the blade is in uh, is in mint condition engraved on the spine. And a uh, nice engraving on the back of hunting scenes. And uh, let's see who who made this one if we can. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Icorn. No, it's a WKC. <laughs> uh, and it just has the knight head on it without yeah. the WKC initials. So we know this comes from uh, the 20s or the real early 30s. So, uh, but that's not a nice piece. Not a bad piece for you guys out there looking for basic hunting stuff. Nothing wrong with that. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got a RAD officer, and uh, somebody put an army portapier on it. So, you know, you see all kinds of things, guys. Uh, um, you can't get mad because it's a good army porta piece, so it can be used on something else. But uh, uh, there were no uh, there were no porta piece that were worn on uh, on RAD officer daggers or enlisted man's daggers. Now this one is uh, kind of worn. The um, the silvering is kind of worn on it, or it's an aluminum. It's probably an aluminum example made as aluminum. Yeah, it looks later, like a late example. Later yeah. aluminum. Yeah, you're right, Ob. The scabbard still got good silvering on it, and well, the blade—I don't see the motto. Oof. Oh, there it is. There, it's just about there. I have to turn it. Yeah. You can just about see that yeah, there. Yeah, you can see it. It's there. Yeah. I don't know, viewers, if I can catch that for you, but I—I, um, I, you know, I wonder it why it's there. there. Boy, that was really a light etch. Up. <laughs> Here's the reason for the late etch. Look who made it. Uh. 
F and A Helbig. Yeah, they're not yeah. big on etching. This Their etching was terrible. It was always very, very light, and uh, uh, we find the same thing on first model Luftwaffe's. And, I know, uh, and they're really uh, uh, just. Uh, and uh, they did make some SS daggers, and uh, the mottos are terrible, and uh, uh, so. As a photographer, uh, ugh, man, yeah, you they are hardly, just uh, brutal. So it is, it is what it is, and this is. Uh, they this is a valid dagger for Helbig yeah. because uh, they just actually they just it's it's a pretty rare them. maker for an RAD. I don't think I recall seeing. I don't too recall many seeing a Helbig. Yeah. It's a very rare maker. You're right, Ob. Oh, I still got more in here. That's okay. That's a good bunch. I have a lot of sort of interesting things here. Ah, here we go. This looks this looks kind of nice. Love the uh, swaz. Yeah, um, look, we got a gilded, gilded swaz. Let's see if it's on both sides. Yeah, it's got to be an icor. I got to get this one. No, right. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably an SMF. I think that's SMF. an SF pommel. And the uh, the orange, nice orange grip, really beautiful grip. Um, really good pebbling still on the. Uh, uh, that's an nice. SMF. I'm just going to shut up from now on, okay? Well, I don't want you to shut up, but uh, yeah, you better shut up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we're still moving along here. Prost. Uh, this stuff may not be the best stuff in the world, but Robbie had just said that uh, after that rubble we looked at this morning, it just... <laughs> It looks like El Supremo here. <laughs> but anyhow, we're still moving along here and up. Looks like we have another Luftwaffe. And uh, what would be your guess on this one, Ob? You might be right uh, on this one. Boy. This is uh, uh, there's it, no guild on the uh, pommel. No, but there's the cla there's classic um, um, carrying bands on it and uh, well that's maybe not enough for you to tell but I can tell from that and that. Robert Klaus? Uh, nope. SMF? <laughs> the, one, the one you keep guessing at and didn't get. I got it, I got it the second time. It's an icorn. Oh jeez. And it's got hangers with it. It, uh, it looks like uh, one of the um, one of the snaps is broken on the hangers, but yeah, uh, we've seen that before. Yeah, but that's a that's a nice dagger with a beautiful blade, no problem. Now for an icon, I expect the swastikas to be gilded. Have you? It was when it was new, but uh, yeah. well, you, you you fooled me on that one. No, I didn't try to. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a plot. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got next here. A lot of daggers in this box, guys. I really better get my checkbook out, I'm afraid. I mean, there's not nothing that you can retire on, but it's all good entry level, or if you're looking for a decent piece or something. But, oh, we do have some SS. Here there we you go. go. Oh, we have an SS. How about that? Gottlieb Hammersfar. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's got a nice um, anodized out. scabbard. It's not bad at all. And all nickel fittings. Uh, the cross guard is not marked, so it may not be a um, initial production piece. But it's got a nice grip, good runes, and an eagle. Well, let's see what it is. Wow, nice blade. Yeah. Really a nice... Uh, See that blade, collectors? Boy, that's uh, that's really nice. It uh, it has a great uh, motto. Well, let's see who made it. Ta da Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, wow, this double is double proof holler. Double proof icorn. Icorn. This is one of the. Uh, we've seen these before. I think I've explained it to you when they come up. These originally had uh, full room dedications on them. And they were never used by Icorn because uh, somehow Rome left the scene rather suddenly, and they had all this stock. 
and they didn't know what to do with it and then by 1936 they decided let's get the uh, Rome inscription off, uh, repolish the blade and put an RZM on it. So it's got the 94136SS RZM from Carl Eichhorn. Uh, sometimes you'll, yep, here we go, and this, another reason why this is what I say it is, you can see the number one there, that's an inspection number, and that was only done on the Romes and the very early uh, SS daggers. Uh, so this is a, uh, a very fine example and um, a great one if you're collecting um, SS types. That, that's a that's a really nice dagger. That's a good dagger, Pop. That's a real good dagger. Still more in here, guys. Ooh. Wow, this looks like the infamous R.A.D. Hewer. There we go, guys. This looks like a nice piece. Beautiful grip plates and. Uh, this hilt's one of the early nickel ones. Uh, the paint's in nice condition throughout, and uh, wow, no dents on the bottom. That's kind of rare to see. No, this is a nice uh, hewer. Yeah, beautiful blade too. Um, these uh, hewer blades were not um, polished. They came in kind of a matte finish with a nice etch on the front. And uh, this one is made by uh, Horster. That's a very, yeah. very nice uh, RAD. Nothing wrong with that one at all. You know, given the weight of those things and all for the um, scabbard paint to make it all through those years, uh, it's a miracle when it's in that condition. I don't think Horster made too many of them either. That's a, uh, no, that's they a rare didn't. maker. No, they didn't. Yeah. So that's another another good piece. I don't know how many more are left here. Are you guys still with us? I know it's uh, not boring. I hope it's, is it boring, guys? I hope not. I mean, uh, there's just uh, mostly common daggers, but uh, they're still pretty nice to see. Oh, looks like we've got another army here. And this one's got look off the hangers on it, so <laughs> I can't tell what this guy's going to do. <laughs> so there's a nice set of look hangers. I was hoping uh, this was a look, a look off a scabbard to go with that other one, but uh, nope. Sorry, Charlie. No. Uh, let's see what this is. A, I don't know. It's a, it's a oh, beautiful blade. Really great blade. It's a nice cross guard too. Oh, there we go. It's a first, or this kind of the second style icorn cross guard that you don't see very much. Um, they only made this guard for a short time before they switched to the uh, uh, final type. So that's a. That's a neat dagger. Uh, the only thing I don't really like about it, it's in a, um, a generic style scabbard. Um, and it's got Luftwaffe hanger, so uh, this needs to have the proper scabbard with it, but uh, still nice. Okay, that's that. And uh, this looks like the last piece of a lot of daggers in this box. That's why it was so heavy. Hmm. Ah, that's not heavy. Oh, looks like we got a, a first model look off a dagger here. Yeah, good uh, one too. Early fittings. Yeah, it's got early fittings and. Um, Decent leather, a couple of little scuffs, but uh, that's easy to cover up with a little Meltonium shoe cream. Yeah, it's not. That's not a bad piece. All this will cover with a little Meltonium because they're not cuts; they're just surface uh, scuffs, and it's got a good, uh, good nickel hanger on it. And 
Uh, let's see who made it. Wow, look at that blade. Oh my goodness. Wow. That blade is fantastic. Ah, uh, no maker. <laughs> Sometimes you see that. And it's also unusual. It has a red um, felt buffer. Maybe that maker didn't, uh, not only didn't put their name on it, but they didn't conform to the usual uh, blue leather uh, buffer. But it's still. Oh, the, the red buffer's general, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. I've only seen pictures of this piece so far in the uh, email, so I can't wait to see it. Oh, there's that phone again, Ob. They won't quit. Too many customers. <laughs> Well, okay, you say, uh, what is that? Well, that's a nice leather box. Now, when we open this, I'm not sure how it opens, but I'm still not sure how it opens. That has to be the hinge side. I don't want to wreck anything. No, I, no, I have no idea how this opens. All right, let's take a look at it. Okay, collectors, uh, we finally uh, figured out how to open this box. And there's a little nail in here that you pull out and the lid comes open. And there you're looking at a very sophisticated uh, drafting kit. Uh, would you say, oh yeah, okay, who cares? Well, I'll show you why you care. Uh, this was Adolf Hitler's personal drafting set. It is totally documented. Um, the consigner uh, is an author uh, that wrote a book over Salzburg. His name is Stephen Mueller. And um, while well, he was writing this book in the 1990s, um, he visited many of the people that were close to Hitler, uh, one of them being Otto Gunther. Uh Guncha was um, Hitler's personal adjutant uh, right to the end of the war. And um, Adolf uh, gave this drafting set to Guncha uh, and told him to destroy it, uh, which he did not knew, that did not do. Um, I have a letter uh, attesting to all of this, um, and I also have um, pictures of uh, Stephen Mueller with Otto Guncha uh, in the 1990s. They became pretty good friends, had dinner many times together, uh, and Gucci, uh was quite old then and uh, figured that this was the person that, uh, that deserved the AH uh, drafting kit. So this is absolutely 100% uh, original with full documentation attesting to it and uh, <laughs> I mean, it feels kind of funny to have that. You know that Hitler he fancied himself an architect, and uh, uh, he loved to fool around making designs for buildings, and this was something that he certainly extensively used. So uh, you never know what, uh, what is going to come into um, uh, good old Whitman's here. And... Um, uh, this tells the tale, and if you don't have this book, you might see if you can find it on the internet. It's very interesting, uh, giving a lot of the little known, little known personal facts uh, having to do with uh, Hitler and 
his associates. And um, so there you are. Um, I think it's something that's um, that's quite um, quite special. And um, uh, we shall see. Uh, it's very rare that something like this uh, comes up for sale, and it, it almost feels weird uh, <laughs> having such a uh, important thing uh, down in the Whitman cellar. Uh, but I don't know. I sometimes say sooner or later, everything comes through my cellar, and. Uh, with all the years we've been in business these past 50 years, it, uh, we have seen a, an awful lot of things. So with that, uh, we'll end our unboxing number 49, was it, Ob? 49. Yep. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of long. I apologize for that. But uh, uh, we're just, hey, you guys want to see what we get in, and we're showing it to you. So thanks a lot for watching, and if I can help you, let me know. Thanks a lot.